In today's clip, I'm going to give some generic advice for young people who are just starting out in the workforce and see if I've uh, reached true cranky old man status. <laughs> That's a definitely maybe. Oh yeah. <laughs> Hey, I'm Zenpak here. So I saw this question on the uh, FIRE Facebook group that I thought was particularly open-ended. So I'll address it here. This, the question is basically, what advice would I give an 18-year-old who's just starting out, who's interested in the FIRE journey? Oh boy, to be young again, it really made me think back to my own path, right? Sure, I think I did pretty well, but certainly there are also things that I probably wish I'd have known earlier, right? So without much further ado, I'll just list some generic advice, but I think these are the essential, most essential advice that I can give to, you know, the youth of the world, right? Number one, minimize your expenses, right? This, this part I can't focus enough on, right? You know, people say live below your means, but really um, the way I say is you got to minimize your expenses, right? Especially when you're starting out, you got to focus on the bigger items like housing and car. Right. Now, maybe you started out your nation career with a great job, or maybe you started out with a very generic retail or fast food gigs, right? This advice still wouldn't change. In fact, if you start out your adult uh, life with a better than normal job, I'd further emphasize and suggest that you minimize your expenses to whatever level that minimally you're comfortable with, right? This means living with roommates and not having your own place, okay? At least for a few years. And avoiding cars entirely if you can get away with it. And if you can't, at least get a car that's reliable and probably about at least three to five years old, right? So after the initial depreciation has already happened. After all, at this age, you have the least amount of material goods, right? So if you can't hunker down now and actually make some sacrifices immediately, right from the get-go, then the fire path is clearly not for you, okay? The reality is that there will always be some level of lifestyle creep uh, as you get better jobs and make more money. So making sure that you start out at a humbler starting point will help you make sure that you don't slide too far into the consumerist, you know, sphere later on in life as well. No. Now, if you're the kind of person who thinks that right off the bat you deserve some lifestyle that you've seen on TV, sitcoms, or dramas, then honestly, we don't have much to talk about, okay? That's pure fantasy land. No one but trust fund babies can live like that. Though for me personally, I joke that eventually, if I had kids, they would be trust fund babies, and I'd still make sure that they, they don't have it too good. Otherwise, they'll grow up weak and become wastes of spaces as human beings, okay? Boo, that's no good. Please keep that in mind. Second most important thing, educate yourself, okay? This is the time to learn and, you know, especially really basic life skills like personal finance, cooking, and how to not be a douche when socializing, okay? An 18-year-old has a long life ahead of them, fingers crossed, which means that any education you get at this juncture in time will really have time to simmer and sink in over time, right? Maybe you go to college, maybe you don't. That is a much more loaded topic, I would say, for a different video. But education itself cannot be overstated, right? Now that you're an adult, you cannot simply just take any other person's advice anymore, like you probably did when you were a kid with your parents, right? Can't do that as an adult. You'll meet a lot more people in the great wide world, and being able to properly judge and distinguish What's actually good and useful advice is the whole point of getting educated uh, in these basic fields to begin with, because right? it'll teach you how to live a good life, right? Heck, I'll toss in philosophical education here, right? For those of you who are really keen. After all, learning truly what drives you, like your, your personal motivations, is something that even some of the richer people in life cannot claim to know for themselves, right? And number three, lastly, I, I want to, you know, emphasize something that's a little different, right, uh, for people who are interested in the fire journey, which is have some fun, right? Don't get too stuck just on saving money. Lord, no, you must know what gives you satisfaction, right, or more satisfaction than other things that you can spend money on, right? To me, the greatest impediment to, you know, continuing and succeeding on the fire journey, it's similar to, like, when you compare it to a food diet, right? Or any other process that requires some level of sacrifice or compromise, right? The problem is that people simply won't be able to keep it up, right? 
Now, this is easier if you grew up with fantastic discipline like me. Now, let's be clear, I I'm just this way because I'm a first generation immigrant. We were simply poor when I was a kid, okay? So discipline is practically forced on me, right? But for most people, if you feel like you're only making sacrifices, and th that means that all it's gonna lead to is a quick and sudden reversal, like a splurge that's disproportional to your long-term goals, right? And that's no good at all, right? Like no point, you know, slaving away, saving, let's say 10K in your first year, if you're just gonna blow it out uh, at a casino, right? So learn about yourself and figure out what splurges are reasonable, but will also give you outside satisfaction, right? My personal example, favorite personal example is always, I was willing to spend a thousand dollars to go to the fanciest party that I could get into. Uh, now to me, that was totally worth it uh, because it's a one-time expense. At the time, I was like, I'm willing to do this once a year, but to be honest, uh, it's more of one of those once in a lifetime opportunities, okay? And also, I was already making around six figures by the time I decided on that splurge, right? And the memory of that experience to me is, is super awesome, right? And for you, this stuff, obviously, is very personal, right? Now, only you can decide what's worth splurging on, right? Enjoyment is a necessity to get you to continue uh, uh, towards your goals in the long run, right? To stay on course. That's what I think. Oh, oh, I thought of a bonus tip, right? If you work in a place with a matching 401k from a company, definitely at least contribute enough to get that match. That's literal free money and no point in not taking it. Uh, but age 18, I wouldn't be putting in the max for retirement plans unless uh, your first job, you know, pays you well, well, well above the median, right? After all, to me, the aim uh, is always to retire early. So having more money that you don't have to jump through hoops to access is extremely, extremely uh, helpful. Now, again, this is very circumstantial, right? Like my first few jobs, I don't even think they had a 401k. So only, uh, only applicable where it's applicable, right? So yeah, start doing these three or four things and you would be miles ahead of your peers within the decade, okay? That is a certainty. The only question is whether you have the discipline uh, to continue and stay on course, right? And if you do, getting to fire, piece of cake, right? It just takes discipline and takes a little bit of time, right? Thanks, guy. Thanks guys, cheers. And check out some other clips, um, comment, subscribe, and all that jazz if you like. Hmm. Doesn't matter one bit to me. All right, later.